to Recharge listeners, welcome back to another edition of the Teacher Recharge podcast, the only podcast on the internet hosted by me, Fred Cap. Today we have a guest on the show by the name of Chaz Jackson. He's a youth motivational speaker who was born in Rutherfordton, <laughs> that's a hard word to say, North Carolina. And he grew up in a low-income area where everyday living had its ups and downs. Throughout grade school years, he experienced a lot of altercations from incidents such as being bullied and picked on by other kids, as well as red flag behaviors at school. Those childhood experiences affected him, progressing into adult years, causing a lot of low confidence, self-esteem problems, developing false identities, substance abuse, and being incarcerated due to poor behavior and decision-making, which all contributed to unresolved tragic events and lack of self-love. But despite all the trials, he always had a strong inner voice that reminded him that he is worthy of greatness, and he's here today to talk about that. So... Without further ado, enjoy today's episode with Chaz Jackson. What is up, Teacher Recharge listeners? Welcome back to another edition of the Teacher Recharge Podcast. It's your boy, Fred Kep, And today, we have another amazing guest. It's Chaz Jackson. He up in this house right now. How you doing? I am blessed and grateful to be here, Fred. Thank you for having me on your podcast. Yeah, you got a lot on the backstory here. So you went through high school. You're a football player. Did you coach football? <laughs> yes, I actually do coach football a little bit, but I did play all the way up to the collegiate level as well. Right, right, right. And, and you were greatly impacted by a high school coach yes kind of you know what let's just hear from your perspective kind of tell us a little bit about yourself what are you doing now what uh what brought you to what you're doing now all that good stuff so a turning point in my life let's start there it was in may of 2012 i remember waking up behind the wheel of my my girlfriend's car and i was coming head on i had had briefly passed out i was head on coming towards another car inches away from a head-on collision uh Barely missed it by inches, and I remember running into a wooden gate of a church. Now, obviously, you can kind of visualize for me kind of waking up at that instant before that impact. I was intoxicated at that time, and I was actually arrested on site. And building up to that moment of impact that I call it, there was a lot of stuff that was downloaded. I like to use the analogy of a computer building up to this point in my life. You know, a lot of things that create a lot of low self-esteem, a lot of low value, self-worth in my life that caused me to use such an abuse, man. And I was at a point where I was ready to lose my girlfriend, fiance at that time. I was about to lose my home. I had lost my car. I lost my job. So I was in a pretty broken state. And I knew that there had to be a change whenever my lawyer advised my girlfriend that she should get away from me and that I was going to spend the rest of my life in jail. And and that was just a reality check for me. So at that point, man, I entered into a rehabilitation program where it was 42 days. At the beginning of that moment, man, I, I really didn't want to be there. But I remember one night, man, where I had this overwhelming thought of, hey, man, you are greater than what you're presenting right now. There is something inside of you that that needs to be manifested, that needs to be heard by your generation and next generation to come. You can overcome this brokenness that you're dealing with at this present time. And, and that was one of the authentic moments that I had with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at that time. And, and that's whenever, building up to this time, and I'm a man of faith, Fred, you know, I went to church, I... I Got baptized at an early age. None of that stuff was really consistent in my daily life. But it seems like at that moment, at that rehabilitation clinic, man, I really began to wake up that next morning and take things seriously to kind of overcome some of the adversity that was going on inside of Chaz Jackson. And I remember going into that clinic, a caterpillar, man, I came out a butterfly. And things did not get easy after that. You know, definitely had a lot of stuff that I still had to overcome. I built an amazing tribe around me. Mm-hmm. And and to this day, man, I've been on this season of obsessing for figuring out ways to be successful, man. And that kind of 
brought me to where I am now, brought me to becoming an author. And even going back past that through that 2012, you mentioned my coach, even though I had some low self-esteem, some low self-worth feelings about myself, a a lot of feelings within myself that I, I truly didn't, you know, fully authentically love myself. It seems like there's been individuals that came in my life that continue to try to give me hope, even whenever I didn't necessarily consistently have that hope in my life. You know, it was always me taking one step forward and two steps back. He was one of those individuals, my football coach, and was also a therapist, man. I got hurt my senior year in high school and uh, third game of the season, thought my career was over. But long story short, man, I met a therapist that installed hope in me, man. And this is, Amazing how he helped me get back to playing football. And just to kind of wrap all what I'm trying to share up and do and put the icing on top, man. It's amazing that I'm doing what those individuals are doing right now, man. I'm a coach Mm -hmm. and I'm also a a therapist, man. I work in physical therapy. So it's amazing how other people can inspire you during your broken times. And those seeds will be planted in the back of your head, man. So whenever Chaz Jackson was able to get to a point where he built some roots to be able to reach back and help another person forward, man, it was, it's amazing how those two individuals impact my life. And I talk about them in my book, Live, Learn, Lead, Powerfully, Pretty Heavy. That, that's kind of where I am right now, man. So it yeah. took a tragic moment to kind of get me to where I am, man, and, and just having people that uh, inspired me to – inspire others so right. and and now and now you got a, you got family you got a full family you're a father and look at that man okay so i, I do this <laughs> so when i am on this podcast like i we're actually looking at each other like we do it over video chat i just give you guys that are listening the the audio but man you should have seen his face light up i said you're a father and mm. His face, boom, straight up. Man, that's so awesome. You could tell. You could tell this this guy is, is something. This is really cool. So a little bit more to know you. Just a little bit. We're doing something called a minute intro, aka a mintro. That's a new thing this season. Are you ready for this? I'm ready, man. I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Have you ever had a nickname? What is that nickname? Nickname is Taz. I actually yeah, have I the Tasmanian devil tattooed on my left arm, man. I had begged my grandmother. I love it. I <laughs> love to get this tattoo. <laughs> Yo, okay, next one, next one. List two pet peeves, two things that annoy the poop out of you. Wow. <laughs> it annoys me when someone's actually biting their nails and spitting them. <laughs> right. And it also, that's a tough one. And see, so, yeah, another one will be someone that's eating fresh tomatoes and, and, and actually talk with their mouth open and spitting them at me. I know that's weird, man. Uh, not, not big on the whole spitting thing. All good. Next one. How many pillows do you sleep with? Traditionally, I'll start out with two. But my one-year-old, she, she's been waking up recently, coming in my room all the time. So well, I tend to give her one of them, man, to <laughs> uh, four hours you got to have. So, see, uh, my babies, man, they're still sleeping with me. I have a one-year-old and a four-year-old. She, she tries to make her way in there at midnight, too. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. What's your favorite zoo animal? Favorite zoo animal is has to be the lion, man. I, I love the lion. Fair enough. Final one. Final question. Can we get there? What would you do if you won the lottery? Good question. I would definitely, with the mindset that I have, I have an entrepreneurial mindset, so definitely invest, man. I'm thinking of my family. I'm thinking of ways that I can invest and create jobs for others, man. So I think that's what I will go for. That's what's up. Would you tell a bunch of people that you want it, or would you keep that to yourself for a while? I'll have to keep it to myself for a little while, man. I'm sure the dudes will probably be beating my door down. <laughs> so I just know, I, and I love my family to death. I just know my family, man. They'd be lining up at my door like, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I want to be my best friend now. Uh, yeah, That's man. Weird. I definitely have that type of family. So I, I would try to keep it a secret for as long as I could, man. And, hey. and then I'll kind of, you know, gradually kind of open it up. That's awesome. You survived the intro. So now let's get some of the stuff that we normally talk about on this show, which is how can we help our wonderful listeners? How can we help them make the biggest impact possible? So first things first, when it becomes Monday, when this comes out, it's going to be a Monday. What are you doing 
to make sure that you hit that Monday and you are ready for the rest of the week. What's really big for me is when I wake up first thing in the morning, I, I have affirmations that I do. I try to set the tone of my mind early. So I, I do my affirmations. I also say what I'm grateful for because there's too many times in life that I try to take a lot of things for granted. So I'm at a point in my life that where I, I try to wake up and I say, thank you for grace. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for parents. Thank you for peace. Thank you for patience. You know, thank you for confidence. Just, you know, I'm, I'm constantly running these things out for me. And, and God has blessed us, man, to have a house, man, where I kind of can go on my back porch and I can look off at the mountains. And it's just a beautiful scene, man. I just love trying to start my morning, you know, with trying to get my mind correct. I love to work out, man. I love to kind of get my blood flowing. I'm a big workout guy. I try to go on a run or whatever I have time for it always. You know, with little ones, man, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they, things don't necessarily work out the way you plan every morning, but that's traditionally how I like to start out my morning, man. And and really hone in on, you know, what I'm trying to accomplish in that 86,400 seconds, man. So yeah. I don't really get you with the whole one year old thing, but I do have a dog. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I got a dog too, man. We started out with a dog. So, <laughs> Loco, man, he's still uh -oh. doing it. Man. Uh oh, uh oh. You started Loco has out to go out too. I have to feed him, man. We recently, we recently put a little garden together. I met a friend, man, 30 plus years experience in gardening. And I never gardened before. But he was like, man, let's start to a little something. So, I got a little deal in the back. So, I go out there and have to water that. <laughs> Yeah, so I definitely can relate a little bit. So to start the week, affirmations, saying, literally saying what you are grateful for, yes? Literally saying. Correct, correct. Have to, yes. There's, there's this thing, there's this idea, because right now, actually, literally this semester, I have started working on my master's in sports psychology. And there is this thing, this idea with when it comes to anxiety, that's called this idea called name entertainment. And basically, one of the ways to deal with anxiety that I've learned is to literally say what you're, what's making you anxious. Like if I start feeling anxious, if I can think about what is actually the cause of that anxiousness and, I can, and someone can say like, hey, the room is too crowded right now. That's what's making my, me anxious. That's turning your brain into, oh, I'm thinking about that. And instead of that fight or flight mode, which is what anxiousness comes from, you're turning it into, I'm actually thinking about things. The same thing is kind of true when we're talking about being grateful for things. So like if I say, look, I'm grateful for this, you are. What well, you mentioned, training your mind. You're training your mind to kind of see those positive things. You start that off. You start your day off like that. The rest of your day, you just keep training your mind to really start seeing the positives. You're just going to be a more positive person, Brad. That's what's up. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. A wise man told me this. He said, would you rather be at peace with yourself and at war with the world? Or would you rather be at war with yourself and at peace with the world? So I just choose to be at peace with myself, man. I, I really believe that's kind of helped make me the person I am today, man. Starting my morning off like that, really setting your mind, recalibrating your mind on a daily basis. It's a daily challenge. Yeah. I have one question before we hit this break. What is making Chaz Jackson unique? What can other what can teachers look at and be like, man, maybe I could take that into my classroom and kind of spice things up this week? I truly believe that my purpose is to use my ambitious and impeccable mindset to inspire and listen to others. I take the daily challenge of striving to help people overcome adversity and unleash their God-given gifts in a harmonious and loving way. Right. feel that I'm unique in a way of allowing people to realize what they can control and what they can give and receive, and also just getting good clarity and identity about who they are and what they can do when they're manifested by our Creator. So. My favorite song ever written, ever, is that song, This Little Light of Mine. Super simple song, but man... Is that what you're kind of saying right now is that maybe our listeners can really, really hone in and focus on helping our students kind of find their light, see that light and kind of shine it. Yeah, most definitely. And a lot of times when I work with teachers 
in the schools, I try to ask them three questions. One of those questions is, who are the people that made the biggest impact on your life? And I kind of share it too. When I was in my teenage years and even as I got older in my 30s, man, I still have those people in the back of my mind. So really realizing that one. The second one is what obstacles you faced in life and how did you overcome them? And then the third one that I would try to ask is if you was a teenager again, what would you tell yourself? Right. So for me, allowing the teacher to understand who who impacted them and really go back into that emotional state of how they felt as they go into their daily uh, challenge of trying to impact the youth that God puts in front of them. So I truly believe that's key. That's awesome. That's sweet. Awesome. We are going to go ahead, take a real quick break, and we will be right uh, back. And we are back on the interview with Chaz Jackson. And it is my favorite time of the week, my favorite time of the show, my favorite time of life. It is story time. This is the part of the show, if this is the first time you've ever listened to the show, this is part of the time where I sit down, shut up, and let the guests do all the talking. Now, this story could be sad, it could be happy, it could be comedic, it could be downright weird. That's not up to me. That's up to Chaz. So, it is story time. Chaz, take it away. Story time. Story time. I know we've been talking about moments of impact, and I shared one earlier about me drunk driving and how that, that impactful moment changed my life. There was also another impact moment in my life. I was around four to five years old at this time. And I was a daredevil. I mean, uh, I was one of those kids that would want to jump out of swings. Uh, I I loved to climb trees, even at an early age, even at four or five years old. And in my neighborhood, the kids dared me. They dared me to go at the top of this hill. And it was near a stop sign on a white toy scooter, ride down this hill and jump off of another halfway hill and land safely. Obviously, me being a daredevil, I said, yes, I want to take that challenge. So here I go. I went up this hill. I turned around. All five went. I went down. I said, I am going to make this jump. I veered off to the right. And I went off. I went airborne. But obviously, around that age, you don't necessarily know about gravity. (laughs) So (laughs) here I go in the air. And I started to tilt. And I landed. I crashed. I landed on my face. And it was in gravel and glass. And I actually split open my head at that time. So... As I got up, I don't remember, I didn't even feel anything. I got up, I stood up, I dusted my shirt off, and I turned around, and everybody just looked at me and ran. Didn't nobody say anything. And I was like, wow, what's going on? Long story short, I went in the house. Mom went crazy, even though she, she told me not to even leave the front porch. I forgot to mention that. She, that was our whole deal. That was the whole point of me getting ready to go outside. But I, I left anyway, obviously. <laughs> and I remember going in. She about passed out. My stepdad grabbed my forehead. And that was a life-changing moment for me as well. I split my head open. I actually got glass in my left eye. And it was so unique where that glass was in my left eye that they was actually going to remove that eye. Because me growing up, I, I grew up in a minority poverty background. We was on government assistance. And my family didn't have the necessary funds at that time to take care of that bill. And they were just going to take that eye out. But I thank my mother to this day, Fred. I thank it to this day because she thought, man. She said, you are not taking my kid's eye out. And at this time, my biological father, I didn't know him very well. But God sent them, man. He actually, he had insurance, man, and he was able to save my eye. Long story short, man. Uh, glory to God on that one. But I shared this story because when I went back to school, I experienced a lot of bullying, obviously, at that age, starting kindergarten, grade school, first grade, moving on through, you know, kids, you know, they really don't understand. They just kind of react off of what they see. Mm-hmm. And and a lot of that bullying started happening in that era in my life. 
who has kind of developed some low self-esteem and kind of made me uh, kind of act out, to be honest, acting out red flag behavior in school. And that's one of the things that I feel like I'm able to relate to a lot of my students whenever I talk to them about bullying is, hey, Chaz kind of been there and it was up to a point, man. I still carry the scar to my day. I love my scar, Fred, but there was a point in my life where I spent half of my life wearing a hat, man, because I really truly didn't love what I saw in the mirror. So for me, Again, overcoming that obstacle as well. I mean, I'm just so passionate about reaching back to kids that have a similar story that's being bullied, being looked at as differently, but allowing them to take the hat off. You know, that's one of my talks, man. Take your hat off because at times, man, we can put on a fake mask just to you know feel accepted by our peers, just to feel wanted because there's a part of us as humans that wants to be wanted. Right. So, you know, at times man, we can develop uh, false identities just to kind of live up to, you know, society. But encouraging our kids to love yourself regardless of who you are and just to own it and just to know that greatness is within you because greatness made you. So crazy scar. I, you know, I'm going to be honest. Looking at you right now, I can see the scar. Yeah, you see it, man. I love Yo, it, man. I'm be honest. I love That's my a- scar. That's a excuse my language, everybody. That's a badass scar, straight up. Like that is super. <laughs> dope. I don't know. I don't know. That's something to be proud of, though. That's a that's a that's a really crazy story, though. Did you have to get stitches? Oh, hundreds of stitches, man. Yeah. And it actually, Dang. I got stitches. I went back to school and I actually busted it back open on the oh monkey my. bars one day, man. Gosh, so I had that. to go back in and get it restitched again. Um, are you so made of? Are you? I'm sorry, it, man. I'm sorry. Are you made of? Are you made of nails? <laughs> what in the world? Yeah. Oh, so this, 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 yeah, this 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 car carries a lot of story, man. But. Yeah. Uh, no, that's awesome. But it's part of my story, man. It's part of why God kind of put it on my heart to open up and share to other people's, man. Because my Maya Angelou said a quote, man, that sits in my heart so deeply. I just want to share it really quickly. She said, there is no greater agony than the bearing of an untold story inside of you. Yeah. So there, that was so, it was a part of my life, man, where I kept that story inside. And it caused me, you know, I went through a life, man, where I really didn't talk about my feelings, man. I really... You know, I was more of an introvert guy, and and I thought sharing that kind of stuff was a sign of weakness. But as I got older and I began to share, it's actually a sign of strength, and it allows you to be an oxygen mask for other people because there's a lot of suffocating people out there. And just sharing the story like I just shared, man, let allow other people to know that, hey, man, if Chaz can do it, I can do it. So that's what I'm put on this planet to do. Well, we are almost about out of time, so... If people kind of want to get in touch with you, if they want to find you, if they want to see some of your, your work, uh, how can they do that? You can find me on my website at chazjacksonspeaks.org, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, at Chaz Jackson Speaks, all three of those. You can find me through Fred, <laughs> definitely. I really appreciate your time and effort with this, Fred, man. I, I really enjoyed our conversation, man. You rock. Keep doing what you're doing. I love what you're doing for the teachers. Just keep keep laying out every gift, man, that God placed on your heart to do. Hey, I appreciate that. Well, the we always end each episode with a challenge for the week. So our teachers are about to, our listeners, our beautiful, beautiful listeners are about to go into this week ahead what would be your challenge for the week so that they can go into this week with a new mindset um, a mindset that is going to make the biggest impact possible i challenge them to understand that they have two ears and one mouth for a reason so i challenge them if you have a student that's acting out in your classroom i challenge you to listen to them first ask questions and listen I love it. Well, hey, Chaz, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. I, hey, I want to know how that challenge goes. Chaz wants to know how that challenge goes. The way to do that, just email me at teacherrechargepodcast at gmail.com. Once again, that is teacherrechargepodcast at gmail.com. Also, if you or anyone you know would be great for this show, go ahead, email that as well. And you know what, Chaz? It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. We truly, truly appreciate your time. You're awesome, Fred. Thank you so much. And thank each and every listener. Sweet. Thank you.